welcome back to What the Fat. This is your host, Dr. Ryan Lowry. Uh, and today I want to talk to you guys. Today we got a little micro podcast um, about a really interesting topic, something that I literally came across this morning while I was at the gym. I was like, you know what? I got to talk to you guys about it. Um, but first and foremost, I appreciate you guys tuning in. Uh, one of the things I talked to the team about is maybe incorporating in more just like conversations that I'm having with the team. We have so many great conversations that never get captured, but I feel like they would be great micro podcast. Uh, so if you guys would like that, let me know. Let me know if you guys would like us capturing more of like the team environment interaction and releasing those as micro podcasts because there's there's questions that come up that sometimes you guys might have the same questions and uh, it's cool. I think you guys would like to hear from some of the team, kind of get some of their insight, just about random stuff that we talk about because here we've tried to set up an environment where it's not just, oh, live, breathe, eat, sleep, keto, and that's the only thing that we're allowed to talk about. Like We talk about a lot of different things, one of which, uh, which I actually will probably do an entire podcast about is I just got invited out to a place to do like an ayahuasca ceremony. So I won't jump into that on this episode, but uh, it's something that's interesting. We were just talking about like our different perspectives on, on things like that, like plant medicine and those aspects. But let me know. Let me know if you guys would like to hear more uh, more on that. If so, I'll make sure we record that stuff, bring you guys in, allow you to experience and, and ultimately be a part of the conversation. I would love that. I wish everyone could be here, um, but you listening and, and, and hearing everyone kind of interact is, is you as good as it's going to get for you being here in this very moment. So with that being said, guys, I want to talk about a topic today on this micro podcast, something that's very important. And so to preface this, uh, obviously we have ASPI, Applied Science and Performance Institute, and I have all the equipment in the world that I can use there. But as many of you know who might be in one space all the time, you understand like it's it's cool to get variety and diversity in, in your life. So for me, I went out and I got a gym membership at a, literally a place down the road because I was like, you know what? I train at Aspie. We're, we're there a lot. Like I just, I just needed it for my headspace. Like I needed to get out, be around different people. Not that people at Aspie are bad, but you know, just like the, the vibe, the environment. And so I go to this place uh, called Lifetime. And so I, I train there three times a week. And then the rest of the time I train at Aspie just to get out, just to experiencing something new. And uh, for those of you who don't know, Lifetime is more of like a a club versus like a gym the days where I was trying to get as big as humanly possible or like shredded and working out at crunch and people banging around weights and slamming music like even though I'm young like I feel like those days are way 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 past me so <laughs> um, I, I don't do that so I wouldn't go to like a just a, a $20 a month gym that's like slanging around weights and people are just screaming that's just that's just not for me anymore it's just it's not my cup of tea. So for me, I go to Lifetime. And so a lot of guys like to chat in there. A lot of them are like older guys and they're all walking around like in the locker room butt naked. And I'm like, oh boy. So there's this one guy who always comes in. And this morning I went earlier and he's always there. And usually he's like wrapping up by the time I'm, I'm getting there. But uh, I got there a little bit earlier and so he was just getting dressed and he's talking with the, with another guy and like literally every single time he's always complaining about his job, like every single time. And today he's, he's in there and he's talking and, uh, as he's leaving, I like, I'm getting ready to go. And I was like, Hey, have a good day. And he looks back and he goes, you too, man. He goes, it's almost Friday. And like me, that was like a, like so many emotions like a dagger because I'm like what do you mean it's almost like what do you mean like I wanted to call him out like I wanted to just like literally be like I, I what do you what are you talking about but the thing that bothers me the most is this guy was right before he says that right so he's always like I said he's always a complainer he's always talking about oh my job stinks blah 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 I have to do this stress blah 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 and he's always complaining literally I haven't heard a word come out of his mouth other than him complaining about his job, other than that it's almost Friday, which is indirectly a complaint about his job. But nonetheless, he's he's sitting there and he's talking and he's like, you know what? Um, before he was leaving, he was talking to another guy who's like a friend of his and he's sitting there and he's literally talking, complaining, complaining, complaining about his job. And then he talks about like, oh yeah, me and the wife are going to Costa Rica this weekend. 
And I'm just sitting there and I was just like, I was listening. I was like, all right, I'm getting ready to, to go out and train. But I'm sitting there and I'm like hearing him talk a little bit more. And he's like, yeah, I'm going to go golfing with some buddies. Um, I actually have some work friends that are, that are coming with us. But he goes, we're, and the, the other guy's telling him all these amazing things to do in Costa Rica and how Costa Rica is amazing. It has, has all these different things. And I'm sitting there and I'm just like looking at, I was like looking at these guys. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, how many people would wish for your Monday, right? You're bitching and complaining about your job and what you have to do. And there are so many people in the world that are wishing for your Monday and you're complaining and, and wishing for Fridays. And keep in mind, this guy is probably someone who earns easily six figures. Like, I don't know what his exact job is or what he does, but like, there's no doubt in my mind based on what he wears and drives and his demeanor. Not that I, I judge that, but just based on that and, and what he talks about, what I've indirectly heard, he easily earns six figures, yet he's complaining about it. And so what I, the main premise of why I want to talk about this is a lot of times people think money drives happiness in the work environment uh, and it doesn't right uh, at the end of the day it's far from the truth because this guy probably has anything that he probably would want or a typical person would want he, the guy's going to Costa Rica for a weekend like who does that usually it's like oh me and my family are going away for a week he's like oh no me and the wife are popping over to Costa Rica for the weekend I'm like probably in your private jet or something like unbelievable right yet he's one of those guys who goes it's almost, I can't wait, it's almost Friday. And for me, it just like, that rung a bell with me. And I'll explain to you why, is because, like I said, how many people in the world would wish for that guy's Monday, right? And the reason I say it is because like my dad was one of those people back in 2011, I believe, when we they had a file for their first bankruptcy and my dad lost his job. He was working for Lehman Brothers, which, for those of you who are listening, know what happened with Lehman Brothers in New York. Like, it just crashed and went down. And, like, their employee, it was like one day they were working, the next day they were out. Uh, and com him coming from a military background, he was in the military, uh, literally, I think he has a high school diploma, but has no college. And for him, like, that's all he knew. Like, he knew security and he knew being a police officer because that's what he did for 25 years of his life. And then all of that was, like, washed away. And so for him, like for three years, I remember coming home every single day and he was on computers just filling out job applications, filling out job applications and like was just trying to figure out a way to work. And that's a whole nother conversation that we can have. But literally, I look at that and I'm sure there's tens, hundreds of thousands of people who are in a somewhat similar situation that would kill to have this guy's Monday, yet he's complaining on a Wednesday or Thursday about uh, how close it is to Friday. And I'm like, you take for granted the opportunity that you have to have an incredible job, to be able to go away to Costa Rica for the weekend. And there's, and like, I think people just lose perspective. I think you get wrapped up in that environment. And I'm not trying to dog this guy. What I'm saying is that sometimes when money isn't the issue, people think like, oh, that's what drives happiness. But yet this guy isn't even happy in his own workplace. And I know like Gary V and a lot of these guys talk about this, but at the end of the day, like that should be priority number one, right? I would personally, 100% would rather make $20,000 a year scrape by than make $100,000 a year and be absolutely miserable as long as I was extremely happy and fulfilled in that $20,000 a year job. Like by far, I would rather live with four friends in a terrible apartment and make $20,000 a year, but absolutely love and have passion for my job, then make $100,000 a year, go home, hate what I'm doing, complain about it all day, uh, and just be miserable with those around me. And I think that that conversation needs to be had more. I think sometimes people see these people who are making six figures, some people even making seven figures and think, oh, they must be happy. Yeah, this guy's one of the most miserable people. And I wanted to tell him like, cool, buddy, well then leave your job. Like, Go do something else. Like, if you have the the ability or the resources to go to Costa Rica for the weekend, I'm sure you'd be fine for a little bit to be able to find something you, you care about more, you're more passionate about. 
And so it just drove a nail in me, like hearing people and hearing people who on the outside, people would look at him with his fancy car and look with him with his nice watch and everything that he's wearing and be like, oh, that guy's successful. Like he's got the life. I wish I was in his shoes. Yet he's someone who's sitting in, in the locker room where he's probably having the most authentic talk of his life, telling everyone how much he hates it. And I think that needs to resonate with people. And I always like to give challenges in these little micro podcasts because I think a lot of times I like I like people to take inspired action. Hopefully, like I'm sure you guys have heard a story like that or you know someone who's like that as well. They complain, they complain, they complain. Oh, my job sucks. Oh, they're making me work long hours. Oh, I have to do this. I have to, I have to, I have to. And they get wrapped up in that mindset and that language of I have to, right? And And I, I started thinking about that and I have to is drives me almost insane almost as much as like I don't have time. And for those of you who haven't heard my podcast and I don't have time, make sure you go check that out. But I literally hate when people say I don't have time because it's it's a false statement. You do have time. It's just not a priority. But for him, like it's almost the same with me with I have to like no, you don't. You ultimately have the choice. Like, oh, I have to go to work. Oh, I have to be there till five. That's that's a false statement. You don't have to go to work. That's not true. You're choosing to go to work. Now, what are the repercussions of not going to work? You get fired, it impacts your family. But in essence, you still have the choice. And I think when people get wrapped up in this uh, conversation or this language of I have to, they don't realize it, but they're ultimately giving their power to someone else, whether that's a big corporate company, another person, uh, their boss, whoever it may be. When you say I have to, you don't have to, right? There Certainly there are repercussions if you don't do something. Like if you don't go to work, you'll probably get fired, but like stop saying I have to. It's either I get to because you're so grateful that you have, that you have the opportunity to have a job or I choose to, which is the one like, either one of those, like I choose to do this, I'm choosing to go to work, like I don't have to do anything. And I think so many times we get, we have these choices and we take out of context, like you ultimately are the one making the choice. Oh, I have to do this report. No, you don't, you don't have to do it. Are there gonna be repercussions? Certainly, but stop complaining about it. Stop making it drag down your entire life or drag down your entire day. Like. You're choosing to do that. Now, I'm not saying you should you should just walk in tomorrow to your or leave and go, cool, I'm never gonna tell my boss anything. Ryan said I get to choose to go in if I don't want to or not. No, ultimately there's repercussions, but stop using the language of I have to. I have to do this, I have to do this. You don't have to. You're choosing to do that. Like, oh, I have to um, go to my son's game. You technically you don't. You're choosing to do that because you love your son and because you know that being there is probably going to be very important for him and it's going to make an impact on him and he's going to feel better at home and create a a better bond. But in essence, like you don't have to do anything. And I think that people use that as a crutch to take away that to like to push off power when in actuality you have the power, you have the power to choose whatever you want to do. And I think when you wrap your mindset around that, you can dictate the course of your life and say, I'm choosing to do this. I'm choosing to do this. It kind of coincides with what you're choosing to make a priority, right? I talk a lot about time and priority. Like you choose to make things a priority. It's not you have to. You don't have to make anything a priority. You're choosing to make it a priority. And understanding the repercussions and the benefits of doing that are ultimately what allow us to make these little course corrections throughout our life. So... I really hope that resonates with people and I hope people understand like the minute you say I have to do X, Y, Z, you're giving away power to someone else. And like I catch myself doing it all the time. I'm not perfect by any means, but understanding like, no, I'm choosing to do, I'm choosing to go to this meeting. I'm choosing to go here. I'm choosing to do this. You don't have to say that every time, but deep down when you're thinking about it, like ultimately don't forget that you have the power. Like you choose to wake up at seven o'clock in the morning. You choose not to go to the gym. It's not, I have to go to the gym. It's you're choosing to go to the gym. Why? Because I realize it's going to have better health benefits. It's going to make me, uh, so I, I want to look better for the summer. It's going to make me feel better. It's going to lower my glucose and cholesterol and all these different markers that I'm looking to improve. You're choosing that. You don't have to go to the gym. You're choosing that uh, because you understand I'd rather the benefits than not doing this. 
And I, my ultimate goal, like, I, like I've said since day one, is to help inspire people through perspective and positivity. And I think that perspective shift is something that can really help someone is understanding, listen, and I want to tell this to the guy at the gym, you don't have to go to work. Like if you want to complain about it and it's miserable and you're going to go to Costa Rica and have an awful time with your wife because you're still worried about how much you hate your job back at home and you're dreading Mondays. One, understand that people would wish, wish for your Mondays. People wish they had the opportunity to have a job, let alone your job. Um, but two, understanding that you're choosing that. Like there's no one else but you. You have to look in the mirror and go, I'm choosing this path. I can do other things. I can, I can not work. I can figure out a way to do my side hustle and figure out something else. But whatever it may be, you're choosing it. So stop complaining. And that's why I have zero empathy for the people who complain over and over and over again because ultimately it's a choice right complaining is a choice because you're complaining about something that's ultimately in your control versus someone else's control that you think you have to but in actuality you get to or you choose to so with that being said guys i hope that helps i hope that brings a little bit perspective and it was just something that this morning I was listening to this guy and I was like, you know what, like, I just need to get this off my chest because it's something that I, I think happens more often than not. And I think a lot of people don't realize this whirlwind that they're in and I'm trying to reach in and help pull people out and say, hey, let's, let's gain a new perspective. Let's see it from a different light or an angle, even though it's the same situation. So with that being said, guys, I appreciate you guys tuning in. We have a awesome lineup coming to you very very soon and again let me know if you would like to hear some of that some more of those talks and interaction with the team kind of you'd be hearing from multiple people getting their insight as well uh, i'd love to hear your guys feedback again appreciate you guys tuning in we have amazing guests lined up for the next couple of weeks as always guys make positivity louder love you and i'll talk to you later